agree together for his glory. You say, well, what happens when his glory comes? Well, we have an example in Matthew 17. When Jesus was transfigured, the word transfiguration is the word change. Things begin to change, and they change suddenly, and they change according to the directives of heaven, the influence of heaven. When the glory of God comes, as we see with the pillar of cloud by day and the fire by night, that it guided a nation, it guided a people. It protected them from the corrupt government of Egypt and a socialistic agenda through Pharaoh. What happens when the glory of God shows up? Not only does it deal with governments and leaders of nations, it resets things, brings reversals, brings a deliverance to a people and to a country. But how about this? It absolutely, when the glory of God comes, it brings to people a freedom because where the Spirit of the Lord is, and God and His glory are inseparable. Freedom begins to arise. Oh Lord, this is what we pray today. That swift changes would come, not of our might or our power, but God, by Your Spirit. That Your glory would come and deal with corruption. As we see in Exodus 32, when the glory descended upon Mount Sinai, expose the corruption of the people God we're asking for your glory to deal with corruption with corrupt leaders things that are trying to steal the freedoms from your people and inflict harshness upon the innocent oh God we're asking for your invasion of your presence your power and according to the words of Peter on the day of Pentecost that you would pour out your spirit upon all flesh God let it happen this time a fresh outpouring of the spirit of the living God I want us to do this I want you to actually if you could stay standing because I don't know can we sing the national anthem let's sing it this time can we sing it and they can play along and let's bring the flag out I want us to think about this for a moment and those of you that are watching we're going to come to the communion table to the presence of God you say, well, can you take communion for a nation? Think about the first Passover. When they ate of that lamb, not only was it household salvation, individual salvation, but ultimately the Passover would bring about a deliverance to a whole nation called Israel. And so that's what we're going to ask today, that God would absolutely not only visit your family, your house, but you individually, but also, how about this? Whatever nation you're in, may God deliver you. From watch this, in the first Passover, there was a destroyer. That's what it said. God would pass over and he would not allow the destroyer to touch them. Listen, there are a lot of things since the beginning of this new decade that the enemy, the destroyer, has tried to do to those in the earth. And the list goes on and on and on and on and on and on. God must intervene in a way that he's never had before. And as they took of that lamb and they ate of it on the night of the Passover, they applied the blood. We're going to do the same. And we're going to believe God for a deliverance that's going to come. Now, we here in the United States, we are celebrating our independence. And really, I think this Fourth of July is very unique. 247 years since the signing of the Declaration of Independence. And you know what it is? Not only are we fighting for our independence, our freedom, but we're also fighting for our dependence. We've got to return to God. Amen? Amen. All right. Well, let's go ahead. Let's be seated in the house of God. The ushers are going to serve you. They're going to play. We're going to come back and we're going to receive the communion emblems for God to not only deliver us individually, our households, but how about this, our great country? You say, well, I don't live in the United States. Well, then I want you to believe for wherever you live.
Because I believe that we're seeing a global outpouring of the Holy Spirit. I believe that we're being awakened. Amen. And that's what we're going to talk about here in just a few minutes. We're going to talk about the things that... How many of you ever had something get on your... your uh, and let me just say it. Well, I don't know if we can say it the way that I want to say it. But How many of you have ever had something that just stirs you to a righteous anger? The devil is trying to push God to a place of righteous anger. And there are, I'm going to show you there's at least two things that really brings God to a place of righteous anger. And we need to deal with that today as people so that we can see our great country thrive. Amen. Amen. And so as the ushers are serving you, I want you to remember something. And that is this. Without God in a country, We are a hopeless people. You look at the great countries that exist in the earth that have turned to God or tried to include God. And there is a blessing that comes. I mean, you know, how many have ever been to the Dominican Republic? How many have ever been? No, okay. How many have ever been to, uh, to Haiti? You know, those two countries are side by side. And Dominican Republic they have brought a certain honor to God. Haiti, obviously, missionaries are going in there and, and they're trying to change it, but it was dedicated to the devil. And it is so distinct, you can see the difference between the nations by the one dedicated or at least reaching out to the one and living true God in the Dominican Republic and the harshness of what has been brought to the innocent people of Haiti because they dedicated it to the devil. And I believe that's turning for Haiti. Amen. I believe that it's turning. And I believe it's turning for America and I believe it's turning for you. So I want us to do this. I want us to take that which Jesus said was his body. And he said, this is broken for us that we're to do it in remembrance of him. And I believe this in all my heart. It's what 1 Corinthians 11 says, Paul said, look, don't create divisions in the Lord's body. He said, discern the Lord's body. If you don't, he said, it's the reason why some are weak, they're sick, and even some die because they touch certain things of the body of Christ that he shouldn't. So this is a healing body. Because not only can it bring healing to the body of Christ, but it can bring healing to your own personal body. Because he was wounded for your transgressions and he was bruised for your iniquities. But it also can be a healing of a people. Because that's what happened on the night of the Passover. God, when they ate of that lamb in their homes, it unified them enough to follow a man that God raised up named Moses. Who put the people first kind of sounds like 45 and God absolutely delivered them Lord this is our prayer that you would heal us individually in our souls and even in our physical bodies we claim our covenant right to health and wholeness and long life but in your body we pray for a supernatural unity how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in you God, 2 Chronicles 7, 14 says to ask you to heal our land, and that's what we're asking. And we do this now before you, and we expect you to heal our land. Let's partake together. And on that same night, he took the cup and he said, take a drink. This is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. And as often as you drink this, do this in remembrance of me. And you do show the Lord's death until he comes. Well, that blood that was put upon the doorpost kept them from the destroyer, their families, their lives. But ultimately, it kept the destroyer who wanted to destroy a whole nation. We've had a lot of things trying to destroy us and our freedoms, our well-beings, our future. Man, look at what they're doing to children. And I believe, God, as we stand here in covenant with you, 
as we get ready to partake of your blood, Yeshua, that you said this is, may you break and destroy the power of the destroyer that is trying to come against people individually, their homes, or our nation. And rather than that which comes to steal, kill, and destroy, may we have that which prospers, even causes our soul to prosper and brings us into health. And so, Lord, we ask you that this day and we partake of our covenant right in Yeshua's name for these things. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Well, there is nothing like freedom. How many of you have ever been to a foreign country? Maybe those of you that are watching, you've been to a foreign country besides yours. And let me say a foreign country that either is communist or it was communist. And I tell you what, I have. And it is oppressive. And you know how it started? The same way they're trying to do it in our country. Convince you that you need the government in everything that you do. Right? And if you keep depending upon them, eventually they'll take everything and they will steal your freedom. Amen. But we're not going to allow that to happen in this country. Are we? Amen. All right. Why don't you stand to your feet? Why don't you do this? Share your name with somebody and say, I bet I know what you're going to eat on July 4th. Amen. See if you can guess.